I heard a um, saying once that the uh, ultimate good news, bad news joke is the client who calls the lawyer and says, the, um, uh, I've got some good news and bad news for you. The good news is I hit the lottery. The lawyer's wondering what could possibly be bad news. And the client said, think of all the taxes I'm going to have to pay. Well, guess what? Even after taxes, uh, there's a windfall involved for the client. So while I suppose paying taxes isn't good news, uh, the winnings subsume the taxes, so overall it's good news. The divorce side of that joke is the good news is I hit the lottery, and the bad news is, is I'm still married, and uh, does she get half of it? Uh, there's a, a, an article I co-wrote many, many years ago when the lottery system uh, first began spreading past Nevada, and uh, wrote it with a friend of mine, uh, Sandy Harris, a lawyer from New York, and uh, we wrote predicting that the test eventually was going to be whether or not the funds that were used to purchase the ticket were marital funds, as they're called in many states. In Wisconsin, we would call them divisible funds um, or not. Well, a case from Michigan this week, uh, uh, at least reported in the newspapers this week, uh, sort of confirms that our prediction from many years ago was correct. Uh, the case involves a uh, gentleman uh, who was going through a divorce. Uh, apparently, the divorce had been pending for quite a while, and for whatever reason, they decided to go to arbitration. And at some point along the process, uh, this guy bought a lottery ticket, and guess what? Uh, yeah, hit the jackpot to the tune of uh, $80 million. Uh, a lot of it's going to go to taxes, something like it was $38 million is going to be left over after taxes. Uh, nobody's going to feel too sorry for him. But um, uh, he was real unhappy about it. And his argument in the uh, arbitration proceeding uh, apparently was something along the lines of, uh, hey, I'm the lucky one, not her. And she didn't do anything to contribute to it. It was all my luck. And why should she share in it? Um, the uh, arbitrator wasn't terribly sympathetic. And the arbitrator, while not exactly following what Attorney Harris and I had predicted in terms of our reasoning, uh, basically said, um, uh, you're still married to her, and therefore she shares in it. And, and I think part of what appeared to be from the newspaper article, which is all I have to go on, um, part of the reasoning was um, that the arbitrator seemed to feel that this gentleman had probably lost money in buying lottery tickets in the past. And since she presumably shared in the losses, uh, she had a share on the high side as well. That arbitration decision was upheld uh, last week uh, by the Michigan uh, Court of Appeals. Um, and um, uh, I assume what they did uh, was rather than making an initial decision, more or less affirmed that the uh, arbitrator was acting within uh, his guidelines within the uh, orders in which he was authorized to make rulings, the arbitrator statute, um, assuming Michigan's the same in Wisconsin, uh, has a limited uh, appeal on it. And basically, it's uh, if the arbitrator is assigned, essentially, to do uh, a certain task and then rules on items outside of that purview, um, example is, if you, I suppose, if you tell a mediator you're just going to do property division and the arbitrator then I said mediator, I meant arbitrator. Arbitrator then made a decision on uh, maintenance as well as property division. Uh, it'd be a very good uh, argument to the circuit court that the arbitrator acted outside of uh, his or her uh, boundaries in which the arbitrator was authorized to make a decision. Um, so I'm assuming that's more or less what the Court of Appeals did here, and that's not the part that interests me. The part that interests me more is the uh, uh, part about whether the lottery proceeds uh, are divisible in a divorce or not, and what the arguments would be in each side. And uh, hard for me to come up with a really good argument on the side of the payor unless I suppose they've been separated for some period of time and had divided finances. And sometimes when we do temporary stipulations and divide up finances, we put in provisions that any monies earned or spent after entry into that temporary order of the individual, or to the individual benefit 
or the individual detriment of that person, the other party will share in them. We don't always do that, though. A lot of cases uh, we just do informally, and then the uh, pluses and minuses are both added and subtracted till the divorce is final, which in Wisconsin, of course, we have this minimum 120-day waiting period, and in real life is more like about six months to a year, and sometimes even longer. Um, I really don't suggest that it's worth a lawyer's time in terms of drafting such a stipulation if it's not needed otherwise because the uh, uh, potential lottery winnings would be quite substantial to divide because the last time I checked the odds of winning a lottery or something in the range of 132 million to one or there is substantially greater likelihood of getting hit by lightning than there is in winning the lottery. So we're dealing with such a minuscule chance of this happening that it doesn't seem to warrant the attorney fees to avoid against it. If you want to, people want to spend their attorney fees and guard against all the eventualities that are 100 million to one or worse uh, and end up costing a lot of money with very little benefit. But it is sort of interesting to see the 132 million to one case that does uh, uh, come down. And um, I assume part of it as well is the uh, uh, arbitrator and perhaps Court of Appeals finds it's sort of hard to be sympathetic to the guy because the 19 million after taxes that he'll be apparently paying for her are the true definition of found money. Uh, it's not like he exactly went out and worked or did something for it. And I think the attorney's argument that it was his luck that did it uh, is sort of a reach, sort of making it look like there's some skill in just being lucky uh, as opposed to uh, just choosing five numbers and being one of the few people, uh, very few people, who managed to hit the jackpot in terms of these lotteries. So it, it's sort of interesting to read. Um, I don't think it has a huge amount of uh, uh, import for other cases out there because uh, not real likely that it happens. Uh, from a personal point of view, it's nice to see that the prediction we made years ago appears to be coming true. And to this gentleman, uh, um, my suggestion is a philosophical one, which is, hey, buddy, you got $19 million you weren't expecting in your pocket. Might want to just be happy about it rather than spend the, uh, your money on attorney fees to try to track down the other $19 Because I think a lot of people there would just be happy with a $19 million windfall call it a day, and thank their lucky stars. Friendly reminder to subscribe to Wisconsin Family Law Case Finder. Subscription information is on screen for you. We have over 1,600 <clears throat> family law cases in Wisconsin, uh, many cases from out of state, organized into 135 different family law subject areas. You can search by the words, search by the area, search by the case. It's an outstanding resource. And if you practice family law in Wisconsin, you ought to subscribe to it.